Hi, my name is Dave Thompson, and I currently manage a software development engineering team that works on the platform and tooling to support application services being onboarded, deployed, and maintained in production environments. Today, I want to talk about shortening the feedback loop, or how we can take that application development lifecycle and condense it into a smaller cycle. So we take a on a typical application um, life cycle, we have the development work, then we deploy it, then we do some measurements, then we optimize it or change it, and we repeat that loop over and over again. So how can we shorten that feedback loop so that we can get um, changes out more quickly, have um, better optimization processes, better quality, uh, et cetera. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how we can take some concepts from software architecture and some soft and some concepts from development experience and combine those together into a strategy to shorten that feedback loop. Anytime I talk about software architecture, I feel like I have to preface it with a little bit of context because that term software architecture means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Traditionally, software architecture is something that is, is done by a tech lead or someone with the title software architect. Um, who kind of leads from an ivory tower where they define a system design and then pass that system design down to development teams who are required to implement it. That's a very rigid and well-defined structure, and that's not what I like to see as um, how software architecture is implemented. I prefer a more agile, bottom-up approach. Development teams are asking for particular features in their software architecture because they need to respond to the business asks that they're getting from their managers, their product managers are you know, asking them to develop features and they need particular features implemented in the systems that they're working with. So I prefer kind of a bottom-up approach of software architecture to think about it from a more agile context. Um, where the development teams have more autonomy over the decisions that they're making around system design. So for me, architecture is not a thing. It's not a design. It's a process. Architecture is the process used to design systems and structure software. But then there's the question of, okay, well, why do we need software architecture? Why do we need system design? Um, and after years of kind of working in this role, my answer would be that we need software architecture so that we can design systems that are able to respond to change. Our products evolve continuously, and that's why we have agile processes to work with product design. Our systems need to evolve continuously and adapt to those same product changes. So when talking about software architecture, to me, the ability to support adaptation and change is far more important than any individual decision. And the reality is that your software architecture is never perfect. It's always gonna change. You can make the best system design that you can think of today, the most optimized, um, the highest performant system. Well, guess what? Six months from now, your requirements are probably gonna change and you're gonna have to shift. Industry standards change, business requirements change, systems continuously evolve. So software architecture needs to be focused on how do we change the system rather than how do we optimize for a particular point in time. I think some of this may um, be a little bit different from, from how other people think of architecture because we need software architecture to think about issues like scalability, performance, and cost. Those are optimization problems that need system design to be tackled. But in my experience, the actual optimization process is more important than the end result of the optimization. And what I mean is when we're dealing with issues like this, let's say scalability, you need to support 10,000 users today. Maybe three months from now, hopefully three months from now, you'll need to support 100,000 users. Then a year from now, you'll need to support a million users. And so those scalability requirements are changing every day. So instead of 
having system design focused on a particular goal, like we need to support 100,000 users, you want your scalability goals focused around how easy it is to measure your capacity and how easy it is to uh, optimize and scale that out. So in my opinion, the the importance of being able to respond to a change, like going from 100,000 users to a million users, is more important than having a highly optimized system at either of those points. We can talk about this in the same terms of performance, right? So if you're building a proof of concept, maybe a 500 millisecond response time is, is just fine. It, um, and, and that's going to be great. Uh, but once that product gets established, you found the market fit, suddenly your, your uh, project manager may, may come back to you and say, you know what, we're getting feedback from customers that this is too slow. We want to bump this down to 150 milliseconds. And so that point in time optimization is no longer valid. The thing that you designed for has now changed. And so the ability to measure that latency, optimize and respond to it is more important than a particular point in time optimization. So I'll give you a, a case study. When I was a software architecture, one of the biggest projects I had was revamping our test tooling. We had um, on this particular project, we had like eight different test frameworks. Some of them were difficult to use. Some of them were less reliable than others. And this really slowed down development. So you wouldn't think that testing would really be a, a traditional aspect of software architecture. But in this case, it was slowing down our development and it was impeding our ability to measure things like performance impacts. Like if we made a change to an application and we wanted to run performance or load tests against it, that was either very laborious or, or slow and it slowed down that, that feedback cycle. So one of the most successful architecture initiatives we did for this project was to take that set of eight, eight different uh, test tooling frameworks and cut it down to three, right? We had unit tests, integration tests, and, and uh, performance tests. We cut out, we eliminated a ton of tests, and then we made the remaining tests easier to use so that developers could go through the testing cycle faster and have more confidence in their work. And again, that's something that's maybe counterintuitive. We went from more tests to less tests, which is counterintuitive. But those fewer tests were easier to work with, with better tooling, and were more reliable for developers to work with. And it was incredibly successful in, in um, accelerating our ability to deliver new features. And as you probably guessed, that sounds like a lot like developer experience, right? Tweaking tests and making test frameworks easier to use, that is developer experience. Now, developer experience is a, a, you know, a newer term that we talk about a lot. It's hot right now. We, we want to increase developer experience so they can shorten these, these feedback cycles. But to me, developer experience and architecture are highly related in the, in the sense that they're both designed to optimize your systems for change. Architecture maybe optimizes your systems for changes a little bit more and developer experience maybe optimizes your um, developer tooling a little bit more, but both of them are focused around the ability to shorten that feedback cycle around changes, either product changes or system changes. So for developer experience to me, again, we have this um, software kind of life cycle. We start with planning out the features we wanna add. We code those features, we test them, we build them, we validate them, we deploy them. We measure the impact of those deployments. We go back, see what we won't need to optimize and then do it all again. And for developer experience, instead of designing your systems to adapt to change, you're developing platforms, automation, and tooling for your developers to use to interact with this software lifecycle, making your testing easier, making your deployments easier, making measuring your, uh, your performance aspects easier. That's all part of developer experience. So a case study of this um, 
in my in my current position, we have you know very strict uh, rules where um, you know developers can't access production environments. So we built out our own um, kind of platform to do uh, deployments and maintenance in production environments that allows service teams to interact with uh, production environments, even if they don't um, have full access. So I'm not going to get into that too much, but basically what it is, it's we have a job queue that runs in our corporate network that developers have access to. They use a, they use a client app that uh, uses an API server, puts a job on the queue. This job could be something like um, deploying an application, or it could be something like uh, pulling logs, uh, performing some type of maintenance task, if there's an incident going on, that kind of thing. Then we have a job executor that is running in a protected um, separate network in the production stack that is uh, pulling those, those job requests uh, off a of queue. And that allows our um, developers to have more interaction with production environments, even uh, while preserving our security restraints around that. And an aspect of how that increases the feedback loop goes back to what I, I, I talked about before, which is optimizing uh, performance. So in our environments, we have some performance testing environments that have actual um, customer data in it, which makes our performance tests more accurate. But since it has actually customer um, data in it, the uh, people who are allowed to directly access that platform is severely limited. We have to go through um, a lot of different hoops to, to have access to that. So a developer on a team who wants to run a performance test doesn't have access to that. However, they can use this platform that we built to be able to um, push code changes and push related performance tests and run those tests to those environments. So this is an example of you know, something performance, right? Performance is typically something in that we would consider in the software architecture realm of, of being able to optimize your performance. But in this case, we have you know, building out a platform from a developer experience perspective to help teams enable that. And you can see how those are highly related. So we've talked about architecture, we've, we've talked about developer experience. What are the kind of takeaways from, from this talk? Well, the first thing I would say is that if you have tech leads or architects who are tasked with designing your systems, they should be considering DX at a developer experience as one of their primary goals. So if you're developing that, um, you're developing a system, um, it's the latest and greatest, it uses this, all, the, all the coolest cloud services, all the microservices, all the event-driven actions, your tech leads should be considering, well, how do I debug this? How do I get the logs from this? If there's a performance problem, how do I optimize it? Those are things that are inherent in system design that need to be considered because six months from now, when your requirements change, it, you want to be able to um, quickly respond to that, update the system, do your optimization, and meet those new requirements. Secondly, system design should always be optimized for continual change first. If you have um, the preference of either designing um, change into the system or optimizing for your for your current requirements, you should always choose the optim the the uh, change option because the, the systems will never stop changing. Um, so you need to be able to to respond to those changes as they come up. Uh, third item: if you have teams or people who are tasked with developing developer experience tools and platforms, scalability, performance, debugging should be core to that work. So if you're building tooling, you should think about how do I use this tooling to measure the performance? How do I use this tooling to do capacity or cost analysis on the code that we're deploying? You should make it, those developer experience tools and platforms that you're developing should make it easy for service teams to answer the type of questions that uh, tech leads are going to need to know to answer system design questions. So those are uh, my takeaways. Um, you can contact me a couple ways. I'm in the platform engineering Slack. Uh, 
you can reach out if you want to chat. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, also, these um, these slides are on GitHub. My GitHub name is uh, is Lens Coder, and I have a, a repo called Present with the different slide decks that I've presented. Or, um, so you can take take a look at that. Uh, please reach out if you have any questions. Um, and thank you.